Whenever a new major product line launches from the likes of AMD, Nvidia, or Intel, there's a bit of a waiting period after that launch date when the product goes from being in the hands of a few reviewers and maybe testers at the manufacturer to being distributed widely amongst the general population. The RTX 4090 launched a couple weeks ago and an issue came up this week that has really grabbed the attention of the tech media in general. It started with this post over on the Nvidia subreddit with a burned and melted 12 volt high power connector. The connector that's able to provide up to 600 watts of power to these new graphics cards, but the last thing any PC builder wants to experience after installing their brand new $1,600 graphics card is the smell of melted plastic and the puff of smoke that comes along with burnt electronics. The question is, is this a widespread issue or just limited to a few unlucky users? There's been lots of speculation this week with videos posted by Jay as well as many others, but I think the root cause has been discovered thanks to a post by Igor of Igor's Lab. So today I'm gonna to be going over this situation to bring you guys up to speed if you haven't heard of it yet. I'm gonna be attempting to validate what Igor saw with these four eight pin to single 12 pin adapters. And I also spoke with Jay this morning because we are doing a similar project today, disassembling one of these adapters his video is likely already up, so I'll post a link to that in the description, but that's enough for this intro. Let's see if we can actually discover what's really causing these 12VH power connectors to melt. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by Kyoxia's ever-expanding family of high-performance SSDs, featuring their latest Bix 3D flash memory. The XG8 Client M.2 SSD is now available in capacities up to four terabytes, with up to seven gigabytes per second sequential read speeds. And for enterprise or hyperscale data center use, consider the CD8, which supports PCI Express 5.0, or the XD7P, which leverages the thermal and performance benefits of the E1.S form factor, ideal for pairing with the latest AMD Epic or Intel Xeon server hardware. For more on Kyoxia SSDs, click the sponsor link in the video description. So the first question for a lot of people who saw this image posted just about three or four days ago is, is this a one-off issue or is this widespread? Unfortunately, it quickly became apparent that Reggie Gekil was not the only one to experience this as multiple other users have chimed in showing pictures of melted or burnt power connectors. And they aren't necessarily using these cables in a horrible fashion either. They're either vertically posted like this one or even in cards that are mounted vertically like this without an adapter cable being scrunched up against the side panel or something that might cause trauma to the connection. It does seem like Nvidia is paying attention to this situation at least right now, according to a post over on The Verge. They spoke with Nvidia PR rep Brian Del Rizzo, aka BDR, and he said, we're investigating the reports and we are in contact with the first owner and we'll be reaching out to the others for additional information. And that does appear to be corroborated by this post. An Nvidia rep has gotten in touch with the people who are posting, saying that they've experienced melted or otherwise damaged connectors. Apart from RTX 4090 early adopters, we also have manufacturers who have been testing stuff. Galax actually tested a loose connection and a good connection while pumping 1,530 watts through this connector, which is more than double what it's rated for. They found that even pumping that much current through the cable, it only peaked at uh, close to 80 degrees Celsius. However, if the connection was loose, which increases the resistance across those connections, they quickly saw the temperatures go up to above 100 degrees, which would potentially cause the melting situation that we've seen. Now, it is true that there might be aftermarket solutions for this situation. Cable Mod, for example, is developing this 12VH power 90 degree adapter. But given the prices of these cards costing $1,600 to $1,800 or more, you don't necessarily want to be forced to go and immediately buy some aftermarket product just so you don't also have a melted cable. Other solutions have come up like re-terminating the NVIDIA RTX 4090 adapter cables with better pin connectors, which again would likely improve the situation, but not what you want to do after just spending $1,600 plus on a new graphics card. And over on Boot Sequence, they did do a test with these connectors to show how they connect together and how flimsy they can potentially be, especially if they are rocked back and forth extensively with multiple plugging and unplugging, or if the cable were angled away from the actual connector itself at a sharp angle, potentially increasing the heat and then also maybe leading to a melting situation. However, I think there might be a little bit more to it than just the pin connections. For one, Jay has already attempted to recreate the melting situation with a sharp bend using the included NVIDIA adapter. He found that even when running under a full load, he was only seeing temperatures around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. And again, it would need to push to 100 degrees or more to reach the melting point for these cables. But then just last night, Igor of Igor's Lab posted this article where he assesses the situation. And long story short, according to Igor's professional opinion, the problem lies not in the 12VH power standard itself, but in these adapter cables that NVIDIA has shipped with pretty much all of the first run of RTX 4090s. 
So here's a schematic that shows the electrical connections between your four 8-pin power connectors and the 12-pin adapter here. And please note that the pins marked in yellow are the 12-volt pins, and those are the ones that actually matter. You might also note that on this schematic at least, there are not individual connections going between here, where all of those connectors from the 8 pins are bridged together, over to here where the six 12-volt pins actually pass through the 12-volt high-power connector. You might also note that of the four sense pins on top, there are two that are actually empty and not currently being used. The others are wired through a logic board that's within the adapter itself that simply indicates whether there are enough connections to provide 600 watts of power or 450. So in order for this adapter to provide 600 watts of power at 12 volts, you would need 50 amps of current flowing through it. You can see from this chart that using eight pin connectors, that would be distributed across 12 different pins. Whereas with the new connector, it's distributed across six different pins which is of course fewer, but it's still within the tolerances of the PCIe 5.0 spec, which this adapter is designed to be compatible with. So if one of these six pins didn't have a good connection, then the 50 amps of current would be distributed across the other five, which is about a 16 to 17% reduction, but probably still wouldn't cause the melting situation that we've seen. Unfortunately though, when Igor actually disassembled the adapter, he found that there is not an individual lead going to each of those pinouts. There are actually only eight 14 gauge wires going into this connector, and since only the top four are going to the 12 volt leads, that means you have four wires, not six. This article is linked in the description and I highly recommend checking out Igor's site. He has a YouTube channel too, if you guys wanna subscribe over there. He's very knowledgeable and he does a lot of in-depth investigative content like this. Now here we can see where one of the uh, wires, one of the solder points for the 14 gauge wire has disconnected from this contact plate, which actually bridges all of those together. And here we can see further evidence of that with the block actually shaved down. These are all bridged in here. So if one of those disconnects, you're not looking at a 16 to 17% reduction in the number of contact points. You're actually looking at a 25% reduction. So because I received multiple RTX 4090 GPUs for this launch cycle, I actually have several of these adapters. So I'm going to attempt to recreate Igor's work and validate his findings. I have brought a handful of tools to help me with that, including a Dremel. We'll see if it comes to that. And then I have this actual native 12 VH power adapter cable from Corsair that we can use as a basis for comparison. Actually, let's look at this right now. So the uh, main thing I wanna point out for the Corsair cable here is note the wires going in. There are actually six wires that you can see on top and six wires on the bottom, as well as the two sense wires that are actually wired back through to the power supply itself. The NVIDIA adapter looks the same in terms of the plug itself, although uh, it does look like all four of the sense pins are populated here, but we'll see how that goes in a moment. But we have this pretty thick wrap here at the base, so we can't really tell what's going on underneath. I have an assortment of tools here, so hopefully we'll be able to cut this open. I've even uh, brought my vise, although it's not actually connected to anything, but it's very heavy, so I'm sure it'll help. Here you can see those two sense wires that lead to nothing, which is okay. They're, they're not supposed to lead anywhere according to the spec, but why, like, why would they even put those there? Seems like they could have saved some material and just left them out. The other sense wires go over to the other connectors, like I said, and that's just to validate how many are actually plugged in so that the adapter can determine whether it's providing 450 watts or 600 watts of juice. So I've just pushed the sheathing down here and, and taped it to keep it out of the way and I snipped the uh, two sense wires since we are sacrificing this connector. But look, already we can see validation of Igor's findings. We have four wires on the bottom and we have four wires on top. And yes, while those are thicker gauge wires, you can see uh, hopefully right here, it's 14 AWG uh, for the thickness, even a temperature rating right here at 105 degrees Celsius indicating when these might potentially melt. So while those might meet the spec, they are not gonna be as tolerant to actually having the connections broken. So I'm gonna continue to disassemble this to see how easy it might be to break one of those connections. So I managed to cut away this rubber sheathing, uh, which was kind of a pain in the butt, but not too bad. And here we can see the actual connection points for these four wires. And it looks like the two metal wires are actually going to two pins each and the two outer wires are just going to one pin, but all those connections are actually being bridged by a metal plate that they all connect to. So it's not necessarily like the two outer ones just have one connection and the two inner ones have two. And in fact, looking from the side here, you can see the pads uh, where the wires are soldered onto. And you can see just a little bit of separation there uh, between between the top plate and the bottom plate, or the other way around. 
I cannot get this top sheath to get disengage with the rest of it, uh, even with these clips pulled here, so I'm just gonna start cutting away this top piece. So there it is guys with the top part of the connector cut away and this is the top side that uh, would have the 12 volt connectors although these are pretty much the same solder point and connection points on the top and bottom. We can see that these connections are all bridged inside so basically these four wires are providing all the juice for all six of these pins. So this raises some important questions about this adapter. For one, uh, you might notice the thinness uh, of this bridge plate right here. In particular, some of the points going from uh, the solder points over here to where the actual pins connect to it. Unfortunately for my adapter here, uh, the soldering all looks pretty decent. It looks like there is uh, a fair amount of actual material used there. If I attempt to, you know, sort of wiggle one of these pins around, uh, it seems to be attached fairly solidly, and it does seem like it would uh, take a fair amount of pushing or torque or twisting on that to actually get that to pop off. That said, it does seem like the two outer pins, because they have less contact area, there's less holding them to that actual bridge plate. And again, guys, I'm just trying to supplement some of the uh, other people out there who have been investigating this with um, a little bit more information from my end. And if you want my personal slash professional opinion, although this setup here is obviously functional, it doesn't seem as well designed in terms of fail safes. If one of those connections were to break, it would not be as resilient as a cable like this that uses individual wires for each of those connection points. Just dropping one last bit in because Jay's video went live. He did some testing where he actually disconnected one of the wires from the connector completely and then actually plugged in and tested. And he found that the temperature really didn't get that much higher. So here's what I think is happening. Even if the two outer wires broke off completely, forcing all of the current through the two center wires, it wouldn't cause enough heat buildup to melt the unit. What would is if it broke, but there was still a poor but small amount of contact between these two points. That would greatly increase resistance as well as heat buildup, and we know that metal conducts heat too, so if this was the point where the heat was building up, it would radiate out from there, and that's why the pictures we've seen have shown this outer pin getting hot and melting first. All right, so that was fun. I like hacking things apart, but uh, what's the upshot today? First of all, it appears that I have confirmed Igor's findings in terms of the design and the construction of my adapter here that I've disassembled. So hopefully that helps add a bit to the momentum of this situation because let's face it, what we really want is for anyone who has spent upwards of $1,600 on a fancy new RTX 4090 recently to have a good experience so they can play games and not worry about stuff melting or causing fires. I think the worst case outcome for this scenario would be if Nvidia had to do some mass recall for the graphics cards that have been sold thus far but I think the silver lining today is that that might not actually be the case. If the 12VH power connector, although perhaps not quite as robust as the 8-pin connectors used to be, is still functional enough without the use of these types of adapters, then NVIDIA could simply replace the adapters themselves, swap them out with something that has dedicated wires like some of the cable connectors that have been coming from the power supply manufacturers. And at this point, I see that as the most likely scenario. In fact, NVIDIA has followed up just this morning with Igor's lab. They've made an additional statement and they've apparently notified all the add-in card board partner manufacturers that all damaged cards need to be sent directly to NVIDIA HQ for failure analysis, which is something that they really haven't done before, even going back to like the 2080 Ti situation, because NVIDIA obviously doesn't want to have the reputation of their RTX 4090 besmirched in any way. The last thing to point out is that AMD has their RDNA 3 cards waiting in the wings. Those are going to be announced on November 3rd, and it has now been confirmed from multiple sources, including Scott Herkelman uh, that those GPUs will not be using the new ATX 3.0 connector, the 12 volt high power connector that we've been tearing apart today. These cards are probably launching within the next month, so this is not just a recent decision that AMD has made in light of uh, these melted connectors coming out. This is almost certainly a design choice that they made very early on because RDNA 3 cards are likely already produced, boxed up, and ready to be shipped to retailers. So I think it remains to be seen whether AMD made that decision because their new graphics cards simply didn't need 600 watts of power draw and they could get away with three 8-pin connectors or if they saw some other inherent flaw in this 12-volt high power connection standard itself. 
For now, I sincerely hope that it is the adapters that are causing the issue because that is a much simpler fix, a much easier thing to correct than there being an issue with the connector itself. But for any RTX 4090 early adopters out there who might be worried about this situation, first, remember that there have only been a handful of issues reported out of any of the presumably thousands of cards that have been sold. Secondly, I and many other reviewers have been using these adapters for some time for pretty extensive testing, so it's not like every single one of these is going to cause the melting issue. For now, I recommend using a bit more care with these than you would with the uh, older 8-pin style connectors. Make sure you don't bend them too much, especially too close to the connector. Make sure you don't torque them this way side to side because that could put extra strain on those outer connectors, which I feel like are more likely to pop off. And while it is a solution that involves extra cost, I would recommend looking into getting yourself an ATX 3.0 rated power supply, or at least one that is compatible with one of these native adapters that can be provided by the manufacturer. Like I said though guys, Jay is doing a very similar content piece to this today, and I believe he's doing some extra testing with his thermal imaging camera, so I'll post a link to that down in the video's description. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button on your way out. Consider visiting my store at paulsharbor.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all manner of high quality merchandise to help support my channel, and also get yourself some high quality merchandise. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel too if you're not already for more PC hardware content coming at you real soon. Thanks again for watching this one, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.